The easier-to-understand version of The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald, adapted by Sarah Simpson. Chapter 7 Gatsby suddenly stopped having his big parties. I thought maybe he was sick, so I went next door to check on him. When the door opened, I didn't recognize the butler. The old butler was gone, and the new one had a face like a criminal. Is Mr. Gatsby sick? I asked the butler. Nope, said the new butler, remembering to say sir after a few seconds. I haven't seen him around lately, and I got worried. Tell him Mr. Carraway came over, I said. Who? asked the butler in a rude voice. Mr. Carraway, I said again. Carraway, okay, I'll tell him, said the butler as he slammed the door shut. Gatsby had fired all of his servants and hired new ones. The new servants didn't go into town to shop for food and supplies like the old ones had. The new servants placed all their orders for things the house needed over the phone and had them delivered. The boy who delivered the groceries said the kitchen was dirty like a pig pen, and most people thought the new servants weren't actually servants at all. The next day, Gatsby called me on the phone. Are you going on a trip? I asked him. No, old sport, Gatsby said. I heard you fired all your servants, I said. Daisy comes over in the afternoon, and I didn't want the servants talking about it in town, Gatsby said. The new servants are some people Wolfsheim wanted to help. They're all brothers and sisters. They used to run a small hotel. I see, I said. Gatsby asked me to come to lunch at Daisy's house the next day. Daisy asked him to call. Miss Baker would be there. Thirty minutes later, Daisy called. She was glad to hear I was coming to lunch. Something was going on, but I wasn't sure what it was. The next day, I came home from work early and met Gatsby, Daisy, Tom, and Jordan for lunch. Summer was almost over, and it was the hottest day of the year so far. Gatsby met me at the train station, and we went to Daisy's house together. We rang the doorbell, and the butler let us in. He told us that Daisy was expecting us to go down to the hall into the living room. When Gatsby and I walked into the living room, we saw Daisy and Jordan lying down on the couch. They were both wearing white dresses. The room was dark and cool. We can't move, Daisy and Jordan said at the same time. Where's Tom, I asked. Just then, I heard Tom's voice talking on the phone in the next room. Tom's talking to his girlfriend on the phone again, Jordan whispered. All of us were quiet. We heard Tom's voice talking into the phone. He sounded annoyed. Fine, I won't sell you the car. I don't have to sell it to you if I don't want to. Stop bothering me during my lunch. He's just pretending to talk about business to cover up that he's talking to his girlfriend, Daisy said, looking sad. No, he's not, I said quickly. Tom really has been talking to a man about selling him a car. He's not making it up. Tom came quickly into the room, his big body filling up the whole doorway for a minute. I'm glad to see you, Mr. Gatsby, Tom said, with obvious dislike. Hello, Nick. Tom, make us some cold drinks, Daisy said. As soon as Tom was out of the room, Daisy went over to Gatsby and kissed him. You know I love you, Jay, she whispered to Gatsby. Just then, the nanny came in with Daisy's daughter, Panny. Blessed precious, Daisy said to the little girl in a baby talk voice. Come to see your mother who loves you. The little girl ran over to her mother and hid her face in Daisy's dress. She was shy. Blessed precious, Daisy baby talked. Did mother get face powder on your yellow hair? Stand up and say hello to mommy's friends. I got dressed all by myself, said the little girl, showing off her dress proudly. I wanted to show you off, said Daisy, hugging the little girl. You little dream you. Do you like mommy's friends? Do you think they're pretty? Where's daddy? asked Pammy. Gatsby looked upset, hearing Pammy ask for Tom. She doesn't look like her father, Daisy said to Gatsby. She looks like me. We have the same hair and the same face. The nurse came and took the little girl out of the room. Tom came back. He had a tray with four gin rickies on it for us to drink. Gatsby took a drink from the tray. He looked stressed. These drinks look nice and cold, Gatsby said. The rest of us took our drinks. We drank them quickly. I read somewhere that the sun is getting hotter every year, Tom said pleasantly. Pretty soon the earth is going to fall into the sun. Or wait a minute. Maybe it's the opposite. The sun is getting colder every year. Never mind. Come outside, Gatsby. I'd like to show you around. I went out into the porch with Tom and Gatsby. Gatsby pointed across the water at his house. I live right across the bay from you, Tom, Gatsby said. I can see that, Tom said. We went back inside and ate lunch in the dining room. 
We drank cold beer. Everyone was trying to be happy, but that was just to cover up how tense we all were. What will we do all afternoon, Daisy cried, and the day after that, and for the next 30 years. Stop getting yourself upset, Jordan said to Daisy. Everyone feels better when their weather cools off again in the fall. But it's so hot right now, Daisy said, getting more and more upset. She sounded like she was about to start crying. I'm so confused. Let's all drive into town. Who wants to go to town? Daisy looked at Gatsby. He looked back at her. It was obvious that something was going on between them. Even Tom knew. We all felt embarrassed. Ah, Daisy said to Gatsby. You look so cool. You always look so cool. Okay, said Tom quickly. We're all going to town. Tom looked at Gatsby and Daisy together. He was starting to understand what was going on between them. Tom started to get angry. Come on, Tom yelled. Why are you all just standing around there? Let's go into town. Tom was so angry his hand was shaking as he held his glass of beer. He drank the last of his beer in one big swallow. Don't get upset, Daisy said to Tom. Let's just have fun. It's too hot to fight. Tom didn't answer. Fine, Daisy said. Come on, Jordan. Let's go upstairs and get ready to go. Tom Gatsby and I sat on the hot driveway and waited for Daisy and Jordan to come back. Gatsby started to say something. Tom turned and looked at Gatsby. Tom was angry. Gatsby stopped. There was a long, uncomfortable silence. I don't know why Daisy wants to go to town, Tom said. Women get ideas in their heads sometimes. Daisy called out the window. Should we bring any alcohol to drink? I'll get some whiskey, said Tom, going back into the house. Gatsby turned to look at me. He was getting more stressed out every minute. I can't say anything in this household, sport, Gatsby said. Daisy isn't good at hiding how she feels or what she knows when she talks, I said. Her voice is... Her voice is full of money, Gatsby said suddenly. Gatsby was right. I had never been able to explain her voice before, but he was right. Her voice jingled like coins hitting one another. Daisy had the voice of a very rich person, and that was why people listened to what she had to say. Tom, Daisy, and Jordan came out of the house. We can drive to town in my car, Gatsby said. He touched the green leather seat. It was so hot it burned his hand. I should have parked in the shade. Is your car standard shift? Tom asked Gatsby. Yes, said Gatsby. Drive my car to town, Gatsby. I'll drive your car, said Tom. I could tell Gatsby didn't like this idea. I'm almost out of gas, Gatsby said. Don't worry about that, said Tom with a big fake smile. If it runs out, I can stop for gas at a drugstore. You can buy anything at a drugstore nowadays, can't you, Gatsby? There was a long pause. Gatsby looked upset. Come on, Daisy, said Tom, leading her towards Gatsby's car. I'll drive you into town in this circus wagon. Tom opened the door of Gatsby's car and tried to get her to go inside, but she moved away from him. Tom, you drive Nick and Jordan in Jay's car. Jay and I will drive to town in your car, Daisy said. Daisy walked close to Gatsby and touched his jacket. Tom, Jordan, and I got into Gatsby's car. Tom drove the car away. Did you see the way Daisy touched his jacket? Tom demanded. He knew about the affair between Gatsby and Daisy. See what? Jordan said, pretending not to know what Tom was talking about. Tom stared at me. He had figured out what Jordan and I had known about Gatsby's and Daisy's affair the whole time. You think I'm stupid, Tom said to us. Maybe I am stupid, but I'm smart enough to know what to do when I have to. Maybe you don't believe that, but it's true. I paid some people to get information about Mr. Gatsby and his past. If I'd known what he and Daisy were doing, I'd have tried to find out even more. Did you find out that he went to Oxford College? Jordan asked. Gatsby went to Oxford, Tom laughed, like hell he did. He wears a pink suit. He still went to Oxford, Jordan said. Maybe Oxford, New Mexico, Tom snorted. There's no way he went to Oxford College in England. If you're such a snob, why did you even invite Gatsby over? Jordan asked, annoyed. I didn't invite him, Tom said. Daisy was the one who invited him. She knew him before we were married. God knows from where. Tom and Jordan and I were all in a bad mood now. We drove in silence. As we passed the billboard of Dr. T.J. Eckelberg, I remembered that Gatsby had told us he would need to stop to fill up his car with gas. I told Tom to stop. He argued that we had enough gas to get to town, but Jordan said she didn't want to end up stuck on the side of the road in the heat. 
Tom slammed on the brakes and turned into Wilson's auto shop. After a minute, Mr. Wilson came out of the store. Wilson stared at the beautiful car. Get us some gas, Tom snapped. We didn't stop at this dump to look at the view. I'm sick, Mr. Wilson said. He didn't move to fill up the car. What's the matter with you, Tom asked, annoyed. I'm run down, sick, Wilson said. Am I supposed to fill up the car myself, Tom said, angry. You sounded fine when I talked to you on the phone a few minutes ago. Wilson walked slowly towards us. He did look sick. He was breathing hard, and his skin looked green. I'm sorry I called you during lunch, Wilson said, but I really need money, and I wanted to know what you were going to do with your old car. You promised to sell it to me, but you keep putting it off. Do you like this car? Tom asked, pointing at Gatsby's car. I bought it last week. It's nice, Wilson said. Do you want to buy it? Tom asked. It's a nice yellow car, Wilson said, but I'd rather buy the blue one you usually drive. I could make more money selling that one. Why do you need money all of a sudden? Tom asked. I want to get away. My wife and I want to move out west, Wilson said. Your wife wants to move away? Tom said, startled. Hearing his girlfriend mentioned by her husband had gotten his attention. Yes, Myrtle wants to move. She's been talking about moving west for the past ten years. Now she's going whether she wants to or not. I'm going to get her away from here, Wilson said. On the road behind us, Tom's blue car zoomed by with Gatsby and Daisy in it. Wilson finished filling up the yellow car with gas. I found out about something with my wife in the past two days, Wilson said. That's why I want to go west. That's why I've been bothering you about the car. Tom paid for the gas. It was so hot I couldn't think clearly at first. I realized that Wilson knew his wife was cheating on him with someone, but he hadn't figured out that it was Tom Buchanan. The stress of knowing that his wife was cheating on him was making Wilson sick. I looked at Wilson and Tom. Both of them had wives who were cheating on them. One was rich, and one was poor, but their situations were the same. I'll sell you the car, Tom said. I'll send it over tomorrow afternoon. It felt hotter than ever. It felt like someone was watching me. I looked up at a window above the garage and saw Myrtle Wilson looking out. She had a jealous expression on her face and was staring hard at Jordan Baker. Myrtle had never met Daisy before, so when she saw a woman come to the garage with Tom, she assumed that the woman was Tom's wife. As we drove away, I could almost feel Tom's brain starting to overheat from all the effort of thinking about everything that had happened. Only an hour ago, he had both a wife and a mistress. Now, his wife was sleeping with another man, and his mistress was about to move away. Tom drove faster and faster, trying to catch up to Gatsby and Daisy in the other car. We caught up to them just as we got to the city. Let's go to the movies, Jordan said. The movie theater is nice and cool inside. It's so hot, Daisy said. You go ahead. Jay and I will drive around for a while and meet you after. We're going to the Plaza Hotel, Tom said. No one wanted to argue with him. The room at the hotel was huge and hot and stuffy. We opened all the windows, but it didn't help at all. Everyone was hot and irritable. Daisy complained about the heat. You make it feel ten times worse by complaining, Tom snapped at Daisy. Tom got out the bottle of whiskey he brought and put it on the table. Leave Daisy alone, old sport, Gatsby said to Tom. You're the one who wanted to drive into town. There was an uncomfortable silence. You say that a lot, don't you? Tom said to Gatsby. What do I say? Gatsby asked. Old sport. Where did you learn that phrase? Tom asked. Stop it, Tom, Daisy said. If you're going to be rude, I'll turn around and go home. Call and order some ice so we can make mint and juleps with the whiskey. Tom called to order the ice. Just then, the music of the wedding march blasted through the room. There was a wedding going on in the ballroom below our room. What a hot day for a wedding, said Jordan. Tom and I got married in the middle of June, Daisy said. Louisville in June is hot like this. Somebody passed out from the heat, Tom. Who passed out at our wedding? His name was Biloxi, Tom said. They carried him into my house since it was so close to the church, Jordan said. He stayed there for three weeks until my father threw him out. We could hear music from the wedding reception going on below us. We're getting old, said Daisy. If we were young, we'd get up and dance. Gatsby was anxious. He kept tapping his foot nervously. Tom looked at him suddenly. Gatsby, I heard you went to Oxford College, Tom said. Not exactly, Gatsby said. When did you go to Oxford, Tom said. 
I told you I went there, Gatsby said. Yes, but when, Tom insisted. It was in 1919, Gatsby said. I only stayed for five months. I didn't graduate. Tom looked around at all of us. He looked smug and pleased with himself for embarrassing Gatsby. It was an opportunity the college gave to some of the officers after the war ended, Gatsby continued. We could go to any of the colleges in England or France for free. I felt happy for Gatsby and glad that he had been able to shut Tom down when he was trying to catch him in a lie. Daisy stood up and went to the table where the whiskey was. <laughs> Open the whiskey, Tom, Daisy said. I'll make you a mint julep. Then you can drink it and stop sounding like such a jerk. Ooh, the mint looks good. Wait, Tom said, determined to keep questioning Gatsby. I want to ask Mr. Gatsby one more question. Mr. Gatsby, what kind of problem are you trying to create between me and my wife? Gatsby relaxed. They were finally talking about the situation with Daisy. All the stress would be over soon. Daisy, however, was getting more upset. Gatsby isn't causing a problem, Daisy said, looking back and forth at Tom and Gatsby. Tom, you're causing a problem. You need to control yourself. Control myself, Tom repeated. Am I just supposed to control myself and let Mr. Nobody from nowhere have sex with my wife? No, thank you. Some people don't respect marriage. The next thing you know, black and white people will be allowed to get married, too. Tom was getting more and more angry, talking louder and louder. I felt angry about how cruel Tom was being, but I still had to stop myself from laughing. Every time Tom said anything, he sounded so stupid. I know I'm not as cool as Jay Gatsby, Tom continued. I don't give big parties. I guess you have to let people trash your house and act like animals if you want to have any friends nowadays. I've got something to tell you, old sport, Gatsby began, but Daisy interrupted him. Please don't, Daisy cried. Let's all go home, please. That's a good idea, I said. Come on, Tom, let's go. I want to hear what Mr. Gatsby has to say, Tom said coldly. Your wife doesn't love you, Gatsby said. She never loved you. She loves me. You're crazy, Tom exclaimed. She never loved you. Do you hear me? Gatsby cried. She only married you because I was poor and she got tired of waiting for me. She made a mistake, but I'm in her heart. She never loved anyone but me. Jordan and I tried to leave. Things were getting very uncomfortable for us, but Tom and Gatsby both told us to stay where we were. Sit down, Daisy, Tom said. What's been going on? I want to hear all about it. I told you what's been going on, Gatsby said. It's been going on for the past five years, and you didn't know. Tom turned to Daisy sharply. Have you been sleeping with him for the past five years? Tom asked Daisy. Not sleeping together, Gatsby said. We couldn't meet, but we loved each other the whole time, old sport, and you didn't know. I used to laugh, thinking about how you didn't know. Oh, that's all, Tom said, leaning back in his chair. For a minute, it was silent. Then Tom exploded with anger. You're crazy, Tom shouted. I don't know what happened between you and Daisy five years ago. I didn't even know her then. I don't know how someone like you could get within a mile of her unless you were delivering groceries to her back door. But I know that it's a goddamn lie that she was secretly in love with you this whole time. Daisy loved me when we married, and she loves me now. No, said Gatsby, shaking his head. She does love me, Tom said. Sometimes Daisy gets foolish ideas in her head and doesn't know what she's doing. He nodded his head. And I love Daisy, too. Once in a while, I may go off and fool around with another woman for a while, but I always come back, and in my heart, I always love her. You're disgusting, Daisy said, looking at Tom. She turned to me and whispered, We had to leave Chicago because of one of Tom's women. Gatsby walked over and stood next to Daisy. Daisy, that's all over now, Gatsby said. It doesn't matter anymore. Just tell him the truth, that you never loved him, and it'll be like all that pain never happened. How could I possibly love Tom, Daisy said, but she didn't sound totally sure. You never loved him, Gatsby repeated. I never loved him, Daisy said, but she didn't sound like she really meant it. You didn't love me when we were in Kapiolani and Hawaii on our honeymoon, Tom demanded. No, Daisy said. The air was so hot that I couldn't breathe. You didn't love me that time when it was raining and we were out to dinner and I carried you down the steps so you wouldn't get your shoes wet, Daisy, Tom said. He sounded like he might cry. Please don't, Daisy said in a cold voice. She looked at Gatsby. There, Jay, she began. She tried to light a cigarette, but her hands were shaking so badly that she dropped it on the floor. 
You're asking too much of me, Daisy cried to Gatsby. I love you now. Isn't that enough? I can't help what happened in the past. I did love Tom for a while, but I loved you too. Gatsby blinked slowly. He looked surprised, like he couldn't believe what he was hearing. You loved me too? Gatsby repeated. Even that's a lie, Tom said in a cruel voice. She didn't even know you were alive. There are things that have happened between me and Daisy that you'll never know or understand. Gatsby looked as surprised as if Tom had slapped him. I want to talk to Daisy alone, Gatsby said. She's just upset right now. Even if we were alone, I can't say I never loved Tom, Daisy said. It wouldn't be true. Of course it wouldn't be true, Tom agreed. Daisy turned to look at Tom. It never mattered to you that I loved you, Daisy said. Of course it matters to me, Tom said. I'm going to take better care of you from now on. I don't think you understand, Tom, Gatsby said. There was a nervous edge to his voice. You're not going to take care of her anymore. I'm not, Tom laughed. Why wouldn't I need to take care of Daisy anymore? Daisy's leaving you, Gatsby said. Nonsense, Tom said. I'm leaving you, Tom, Daisy said, but she didn't sound like she meant it. She's not leaving me, Tom shouted. She wouldn't leave me for a common criminal like you who would have to steal the ring he put on her finger. I can't stand to listen to this, Daisy cried. Can't we please leave? Who are you anyway, Mr. Gatsby? Tom continued. You're one of those men who hang out with Meyer Wolfsheim. I know that much. I've been finding out all about you, and I'm going to see if I can find out even more tomorrow. You can find out as much as you want about me, Gatsby said calmly. I found out what the drugstores you bought were for. Tom started talking to me and Jordan. Gatsby and Wolfsheim bought a lot of small drugstores on quiet streets where hardly anybody walks by. They sold grain alcohol over the counter at the drugstores. That's just one of Gatsby's illegal activities. I guessed he was a bootlegger the first time I saw him, and I was right. So what, Gatsby said in a very polite voice. Your fancy friend Walter Chase wasn't too good to go into business with me. And you let him get in trouble and you wouldn't even help him. He went to jail for a month because of you. Walter has a lot to say about you. None of it good, Tom yelled. Walter Chase came to us totally broke, Gatsby said. He was happy we could help him make some money. He didn't care how, old sport. Stop calling me old sport, Tom snapped. With everything Walter Chase knows, he could get you sent to jail. The only reason he didn't go to the police was because Wolfsheim scared him into keeping his mouth shut. A strange look came over Gatsby's face. But that stuff with the drugstores is just one of the bad things you've been doing, Tom continued. You're doing something now that Walter is too scared to talk about. Daisy was standing, terrified, between Tom and Gatsby. Jordan looked uncomfortable, but Gatsby's look scared me. Looking at his face just then, I really believed the rumor that he had killed a man. The look only lasted for a second. Gatsby told Daisy that Tom was lying. All the rumors about him were lies. But he could tell that Daisy was pulling away from him. He was losing her again. Please, Tom, Daisy begged again. I can't stand this anymore. Daisy wanted Tom to handle the situation. She wasn't going to leave Tom for Gatsby. Tom knew he had won the fight. Daisy, you and Gatsby go ahead and drive home in his car, Tom said. He won't bother you. I think he knows his relationship with you is over. Gatsby and Daisy left. A few minutes later, Tom, Jordan, and I left too. It was seven at night. We drove in Tom's car back towards East Egg. I remembered that today was my 30th birthday. I imagined my future and it made me feel sad. I imagined myself all alone, going bald, not excited about anything in my life. I felt Jordan put her head on my shoulder and I felt a little bit better. As we drove through the Valley of Ashes, we saw four cars in the road ahead of us outside George Wilson's garage. There's been a wreck, Tom said. That's good. George Wilson will finally get some business at his garage. Tom wasn't going to stop, but when he saw the upset faces of the people standing around outside the garage, he pulled the car over. As we got out of the car, I could hear someone moaning and crying, Oh my God, over and over again. Something bad has happened, Tom said. He sounded interested and excited. Tom pushed through the crowd into the garage. Jordan and I followed him. Myrtle Wilson's body was lying on the table. She was wrapped in a blanket. She wasn't moving. There were cuts on the sides of her mouth that almost made it look like she was smiling. Tom went over to the table. He just stood there. George Wilson, Myrtle's husband, tried to stand up, but he fell over. Wilson kept on moaning. 
oh my god, oh my god, over and over again. A police officer stood near Myrtle's body. He was writing down information from people who had seen the car accident that killed her. Michaelis, the Greek man who owned the coffee shop next door to the Wilson's garage, said that he heard fighting going on in the Wilson's apartment a little after 7 p.m. He heard Myrtle yell, Beat me! Throw me down and beat me, you dirty little coward! Right after that, she ran out of the apartment into the road. What happened, Tom asked. She was waving her hands and shouting, trying to get a car to stop, Michaela said. There were two cars going different directions down the road. Myrtle ran out, and the car driving away from New York ran into her. Son of a bitch didn't even stop his car. It was a big yellow car that hit her, said another man. Tom's shoulders tensed up. I could see the muscles tighten under his coat. He had just realized that it was Gatsby's car they were talking about. The same car that he, Tom, had said belonged to him when he drove it to New York and stopped at Wilson's garage earlier that day. Tom walked quickly over to Wilson. Tom grabbed Wilson by the upper arms and looked into his face. You've got to pull yourself together, Tom said to Wilson. Wilson looked at Tom. Only Tom holding his arms kept Wilson from falling down on the floor. Listen to me, Tom said, shaking Wilson a little. I just got here a minute ago. I was bringing you that car we've been talking about. That yellow car I was driving this afternoon isn't mine. Do you understand? I haven't seen that yellow car all afternoon. Tom picked Wilson up and carried him into his office, sitting him down in a chair. Somebody needs to come in here and sit with him, Tom snapped. Two men went into the office with Wilson, and Tom shut the door behind them. Let's go, Tom whispered to me. Tom pushed through the crowd. We got into the car and drove away. Tom drove slowly until the garage was out of sight. Then he speeded up and drove as fast as ever. I could hear Tom crying. There were tears running down his face. That goddamned coward, he cried. Gatsby didn't even stop his car. We got back to Tom and Daisy's house. Tom stopped on the front porch and looked up at the windows of his and Daisy's bedroom. The lights were on. Daisy's home, Tom said, then continued. Sorry, Nick. I should have dropped you off at your house in West Egg. There isn't anything else you can do to help tonight. I'll call you a taxi to come pick you up and take you home. Come inside while you wait. I'd be glad if you'd call a taxi, but I'll wait outside. Come inside, Nick, Jordan said, putting her hand on my arm. No thanks, I said again. I felt sick, and I wanted to be alone. Jordan stayed by me. It's only 9.15 p.m., she said. I wasn't going into that house. I was angry at all of them, even Jordan. She looked at my face and saw how I felt, so she ran into the house. I sat on the porch with my head in my hands for a while, then got up and walked down the driveway to wait for the taxi to come. I walked about twenty yards when I heard someone whisper my name from the bushes. It was Gatsby. He was still wearing his ridiculous pink suit. What are you doing? I asked Gatsby. I'm just standing here, old sport, Gatsby said. I felt disgusted by Gatsby. He didn't seem like the nice guy I had gotten to know anymore. He seemed like a criminal, and I didn't want to be around him. Did you see anything bad on the road when you drove back from New York today? Gatsby asked. Yes, I said. Gatsby paused. Did the woman die? Gatsby asked. Yes, I said. I thought so. I told Daisy I thought so. I thought it would be better for Daisy to hear that the girl had died as soon as it happened. Daisy handled it pretty well, Gatsby said. Gatsby talked about the accident as though Daisy's reaction was the only thing that mattered, not the dead girl on the road. I drove into West Egg using a side road, Gatsby said. I hid the car in my garage. I don't think anybody saw us with the car. I hated Gatsby so much right then that I didn't even want to tell him that he was wrong, that people had seen the car. What was the woman's name? Gatsby asked. Her name was Myrtle Wilson, I said. Her husband owns the garage. What happened? I tried to grab the steering wheel, Gatsby started, but then stopped himself. He didn't want to tell me the truth, but I had already guessed what happened. Was Daisy driving, I asked. Yes, Gatsby said, but I'll say that I was the one driving. When we left New York, Daisy was so upset. She thought she'd feel better if she drove. Then this woman ran out in front of the car just as another car going the other way went by. The woman acted like she wanted to talk to us, like she thought she knew us. At first, Daisy turned the car away so she wouldn't hit the woman, but then she turned the wheel back. 
If she tried to miss the woman, we would have hit the other car, and Daisy didn't want to die. We hit the woman hard. She probably died instantly. It ripped her open, I said. That Gatsby stopped me. Don't tell me, old sport, Gatsby said. After Daisy ran over the woman, she sped up and drove away. I tried to get Daisy to stop, but she wouldn't. I pulled the emergency brake. It made the car stop. Daisy fell over into my lap, and I drove the rest of the way after that. Daisy will be okay tomorrow once she has gotten some sleep. I'm just going to wait out here for a while until I know that Tom won't upset her anymore about everything that happened this afternoon. She locked herself in her bedroom, and if Tom tries to hurt her, she's going to blink the bedroom light so I can help her. Tom won't hurt her, I said. Tom isn't even thinking about Daisy right now. I still don't trust him, old sport, Gatsby said. How long are you going to wait out here, I asked Gatsby. All night if I need to, Gatsby said, at least until they go to bed. Wait here, I told Gatsby. I'll go look in the window to see if there's any trouble. I walked up to the kitchen window very quietly and looked inside. Daisy and Tom were sitting at the kitchen table together. There was a plate of cold fried chicken and two bottles of beer on the table. Tom was looking at Daisy very seriously, but not in an angry way. Tom's hand was on top of Daisy's. Tom was talking, and Daisy looked up at him, nodding in agreement at whatever he was saying. Tom and Daisy didn't look happy, but they didn't look unhappy either. They looked comfortable with each other. I walked away from the window. Daisy and Tom hadn't seen me. I heard my taxi pulling up. Gatsby was still hiding in the dark. Is everything okay in there? Gatsby asked anxiously. Everything is fine, I said. You should go home and get some sleep. Gatsby shook his head. No, I'll wait here until Daisy goes to bed, Gatsby said. Good night, old sport. Gatsby turned back to look at Tom and Daisy's house. I left him there, standing in the moonlight, watching over nothing.